But some of the paintings are quite simple. Here, the donor has been painted with simple, bold strokes in a very realistic manner. She was a courtesan. The plaque says that she was donating six figures of the Buddha and that she was giving up her old ways to follow a religious life. In this tiny cave, only 10 feet square or 3 meters square, we see a slice of life from Dong Huang in its Tang heyday. The greatest enemy of the Morgao caves is the desert sand. The temples are attacked daily by this hand, especially when the strong spring winds blow in April and May. If they weren't protected, the temples would soon be buried under drifts of sand. Starting in 1963, four years were spent in serious restoration and the army built concrete walls to protect the caves from the sand. In order to keep a natural look, the walls were finished with sand from the desert. Today, the beauty of the Mogao Caves is appreciated by art historians and art lovers from all over the world. But in the past, some people let their enthusiasm get the better of them and even vandalized the murals to take parts of them home. An American art historian left these holes when he took sections of the wall away with him. First, they painted the surface of the wall with strong glue. Then they pressed a cloth against the glue. When the cloth was pulled away, most of the painting came off with it. Then they put plaster of Paris on the back of the painting and transferred it to the plaster surface. But as you can see, this process was far from perfect and some of the paint was left behind. Two of the bodhisattvas from this wall were taken away like this. Today, the pictures of the two bodhisattvas are in the Fog Museum in Boston. Let's put them back and see what the entire painting looked like. The Tang dynasty brought a golden age to the Mogao caves. But eventually the dynasty collapsed. And this part of the country again became the scene of battles between various tribes. 
Some of the story can be read on the walls of Dun Huang. At the end of the 8th century, Dun Huang was ruled by a king from Tibet. In the middle of the 9th century, the chief of a local tribe, who was called Jiang Yi Chao, defeated the Tibetans and ruled the people. Here you can see him at a grand parade with his soldiers. You can see the king of He Tien wearing his famous Kunlun jewel. He came from an area to the south of the Taklamakan Desert, and his influence was felt as far as Dun Huang. This is King Shi Xie who ruled Dun Huang during the 11th century. During the reigns of these various kings, something happened that we can't explain today. The mystery of cave number 17. There are actually two mysteries connected with this cave. The first is why such a tiny cave, only 10 feet square, or 3 meters, should have been built near the entrance to the larger cave, which is today number 16. The key to this mystery can be found in this statue of a chief priest called Hong Bian. He helped Jiang Yi Chao regain the rule of Dong Huang from the Tibetans in the 9th century. The small cave was built in honor of Hong Bian. figures in the mural represent his companions. This then was the reason why this small cave was built. But when it was discovered, it was full of an enormous number of documents and paintings that attracted the attention of the entire academic world. Why were they put into the cave and then sealed up? There are two theories about when the cave were sealed. One says that it was in 1036 AD when Shi Xie conquered Dun Huang. The other is that it was a little later in about 1054 during the actual reign of Shi Xie. The people who hold the second theory say that Shi Xie respected Buddhism, so there would have been no reason to hide the books and paintings before he conquered the country. But during his reign, many Muslims came from the West, and it's believed the things were hidden to protect them from the Muslim iconoclasts. Perhaps we shall never know. But this mural is at least witness to the fact that Dun Huang was an important point for cultural exchange on the Silk Road. For the beautiful woman under the tree was a goddess from the Western lands, a goddess of fruitfulness. In Persia, she was pictured as Anahita, who stood under the grapevines.